Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and uh, once again, thanks to Lance, Book Reader 2012, for sending me these James Bond films. And so I got a look at From Russia with Love. And like I said before on my Dr. No review, some of these are going to be the first time I ever saw them. A lot of these are. Again, I only grew up with Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig, stuff like that. But I saw From Russia with Love, and for those who didn't see that review, I liked Dr. No. Uh, I thought Sean Connery was really good, of course. I thought it was a good you know, start to the series. Um, little teeny bits of action that I had there I thought was was fine. I thought it went at a decent pace. Um, not really any big action scenes and nothing of memorable action sequences. And But I thought the villain was fine. And I thought it just went at a decent pace. It was an easy watch and that was fine. From Rush with Love, on the other hand, I know this is considered one of the best James Bond films. I really don't know why. Uh, I really don't. I saw the film and it really didn't do anything for me. You know, I'm watching the flick and I I found it rather dull and uninteresting. And again, I liked Doctor No and I love Golden Eye and Tomorrow Never Dies and you know Daniel Craig once, but this one. And for those wondering, this again, once again, this was a series of DVDs. Thanks to Lands. Uh, once again, they got a booklet. They got a collect collectible booklet. They got about 30 minute feature on the movie from Russia with Love. Uh, about about 15 20 minute feature on one of the producers, Harry Saltzman. Trailers, radio spots. You know, commentator Terrence Young and members of the cast and crew, just like the first one. Again, Terrence Young comes back to direct, who directed the first one, Doctor No. And Sean Connery is not the problem with the film. I mean, the film pretty much deals with Sean Connery is told to go see this girl because this girl says she wants to be fat from Russia to where they're at. And in order to do so, she's going to have this decoding device that her and James Bond will steal from the Russians. And amidst the film, they take the Orient, Orient Express and do one thing to the other and get the fuck out of there. I just found it very boring uh, at times. The opening was interesting because the opening you think is James Bond being hunted by an assassin and you have Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw from Jaws among others. Robert Shaw is a really great actor and he's good in this. He's an assassin. Badass assassin. And you think okay this guy's hunting James Bond and go oh shit he just killed James Bond. But then they do sort of a, what they would do in Mission Impossible, where it's not really James Bond, it's just someone in a James Bond, a mask looking like James Bond, and it was training for Robert Shaw. I thought, yeah, that's an interesting way to open the film, and Robert Shaw has a good presence to him as a bad guy, that's good. And yeah, basically you have the same group Spectre, who Dr. No worked at in the first film. Spectre, they have this big intricate plan where they want to steal this decoder from the Russians and then sell it back to them. In order to do so they don't get this girl, the character name of was it Tatiana? Yeah, Tatiana played by Daniela Bianchi or Bianchi. She thinks she's just defecting she doesn't know she's actually working for Spectre, so she's being used as a pawn. So that someone can go over there, they'll steal the decoder from the Russians, they'll go off, and then they'll just get rid of the two and steal the decoder from themselves and then sell it to the Russians for a big high price. And they also want revenge on James Bond for killing Dr. No in the first movie. So like the plan is, okay, when James Bond gets there, you don't seduce him, um, then we're going to film it, and the reason... I don't think she knew that they were being filmed either, but the reason they film it is that when they kill the two, they don't say, oh, it was a murder-suicide, and they don't frame the two, James Bond and the girl, and this whole interview plan that I really didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck because I didn't think it was interesting. I know you go, well, it's a James Bond film. The plots don't make sense and stuff. I'm not saying they have to make sense. I'm saying they have to be interesting. 
even Dr. No, as simple as it was, it was interesting. You know, it was okay. He's, you know, this film, it just felt like it went at a slow, dull pace. You know, what was going on, it was not intriguing, wasn't interesting. And while the first film had no gadgets, gadgets here is basically, you actually have the character of Q, which I don't think he was in the first film, but he was in this one, Q. You know, same actor would play him for, you know, the longest time. Uh, basically, it's a suitcase. It's a suitcase that you hit something, a knife pops out. If you open it a certain way, tear gas will pop out. Uh, there's like gold coins in there. And that's pretty much it for the gadgets, which I'm okay, that's fine. James Bond gets there, he meets this guy in Istanbul. Uh, the guy's place gets bombed. They sneak out, they uh, spy on certain meetings. One that leads to another guy leads James Bond to these gypsies to sort of mellow out over there. But someone wants to fuck up the Istanbul guy. So some first off in this gypsy party you have two women get into a big cat fight. Well, I shouldn't say big cat fight, into a cat fight, which I didn't care about. Uh, then these assholes want to come and bust up the party and try to fuck up the Istanbul guy. And you have James Bond fucking a couple people up. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to figure it. And then they want to get the asshole, bust their party, you know, get them back. So they lead to this place where James Bond's really snipe the guy, but then the Istanbul guy goes, No, it's my honor. I want to snipe him. This guy tried to kill me. And uh, I thought this was a little bit interesting scene. Oh, that was another thing they put in. It was a sniper rifle they can put together. That's another thing. That was another kind of gadget weapon. The Q gave him. And the guy who's escaping, like, escapes, like, there's a painting of a woman or something. And the guy, like, escapes from her mouth. And the guy, the Istanbul guy, is able to shoot the motherfucker. And James Bond says something like, uh, she should have kept her mouth shut. <laughs> I thought that was, I thought that was a cool little scene. I was fine with that scene. But then it's like James Bond just meets the girl, Tatiana. They steal the decoder. They get the fuck out of there. They get on the Orient Express, you know, train. Robert Shaw gets there. He kills the Istanbul guy and this Russian guy who followed them. Uh, pretends to be a different guy. Tricks James Bond's ass. But then James Bond's ass, able to trick his ass by opening the fucking suitcase and tear gas. And then that's when the film comes alive, is when it's Robert Shaw versus James Bond and that, you know, good little scene leading them to a pretty good fist fight. But that's like the last 20, 25 minutes, and this is a hour and 55 minute movie. And the, the stuff before, other than the little teeny scene where they, the Istanbul guy snipes the guy and interesting way that the guy is escaping, again, through this picture that's come out like a woman's mouth and James Bond's nice little line. And Sean Connery is fine, Robert Shaw is fine, but <sighs> just not that interesting. I thought it was rather boring, rather dull. I didn't care for the plot. I really did not care for this Tatiana girl character. I thought she was a very boring, dull character. It seemed like James Bond didn't give a fuck about her, you know, either. <laughs> Granted, he kisses her and at the end kisses her, but at the same time, it's like, he's ready to, to smack a bitch, so to speak, you know. I don't mean that in a mean way, but, you know, he fucking smacks her, right? Boom. But that's Sean Connery, smacking women since 1963, when this was made. But uh, it just wasn't really that interesting, but it, it got interesting in the last 20, 25 minutes. When, okay, you know, Robert Shaw... And, Sean Connery have a good back and forth, and I like both of them in the movie. Have a pretty good, pretty decent fight, fist fight scene where James Bond kills his ass. Then they get it's like they saved all the action for that. Right, I've seen action films that have done that too. I mean, hell, the last stand I saw, but I don't know, the first half, I was not bored. I know some people were bored, but I wasn't bored. I was less interested, but there was some stuff, you know, cool car stuff, and you had stuff of Arnold, and 
It was nice to see those scenes. And to me, it was just it was the last half of the movie that really kicked in the gear. I liked the last half of the movie. Here is only the last 20 minutes of a pretty much a two-hour movie. And but then there's some good stuff, you know. Again, the fist fight. Then they get out of there. They steal a truck, and this helicopter comes after them. And once again, really good sequence. Because this helicopter gets by fucking close, like, it drops a grenade, stops the truck, James Bond gets in, and the helicopter gets really fucking close to James Bond. Not Shane, saying it's Sean Connor, but they get close to the motherfucker. Like, I swear, like, the guy's walking here, the helicopter goes, like, right by him, like, almost like this close to it. And really wide shots, and I'm like, wow, that's really good stunt work and really risky. And it's like, wow, you, no way they would do this today. But it was really cool to see. And James Bond gets his sniper rifle and fucks the guy up. And the guy drops the grenade and blows up the helicopter. That was really cool. Then they get on the boat and some people chase them. And they have all these barrels. James Bond has all these barrels of gas. They dump them, shoot a fucking flare, and boom, practical fire. And the boats get on fire and some of them blow up. And like, well, right, cool. So right there, you get th three really good scenes, really good action scenes, a good, decent fight scene, then scene with a helicopter, then a scene with a boat, you know, the flare blows them up. Okay, three good scenes. But the re the stuff before, like the hour and some minutes, just a dull plot, I don't care for the lead girl, uh, the Tatiana. I don't really care. I thought she was a very lackluster Bond girl. I just nothing about her interested me. Uh, the stuff with the gypsy stuff wasn't really that interesting. Uh, you think about it, the opening of the film didn't really matter because it wasn't really Robert Shaw hunting him, and it was more like, okay, here we go. Now let's talk for a couple minutes, and oh, you tricked my ass. So it didn't really go into a hunt, you know, cat and mouse game. Well, well. And then the ending is uh, the girl, who, the woman who hired Tatiana, she's there pretend to be a maid, and Tatiana saves James Bond, and uh, the, the girl has like a little knife come out of her shoe, and it's poison, I think. Yeah, it's poison. And James Bond's like holding her back, and the girl, Tatiana shoots the, the maid bitch. And then pretty much end the movie, so whatever. Didn't really care for that scene. The scene didn't really interest me or didn't didn't really give a shit to be honest. So it's not a rant because Sean Connery is still good. I know they did a video game of this for the PS2. I know there's probably other systems, but I know the PS2 they did a game called From Russia with Love. I think Sean Connery's voice was actually used as well. But I'm like, really? Like I know a lot of people consider this one of the best James Bond films, and I, I see the other one, so... But even then, I just say I easily like GoldenEye, Tomorrow Never Dies, and, you know, all the Daniel Craig ones, Dr. No, I like better than this. I just thought this was a lackluster movie. Other than the last 20 minutes, you have some three really good scenes, but the rest of it, I didn't care for his buddy, the Istanbul guy. Didn't really care about him one way or another. Didn't love him, didn't hate him. The plot wasn't that interesting. Oh, we're getting a decoder. Okay. What do you fucking do? I just, you know. I didn't really care. It wasn't really interesting. It wasn't intriguing. Didn't pull me in. Um, there's like a song at the end from Russia with Love. Didn't give a shit about the song. I don't know who's saying it, but didn't care about the song. Um, I just. Uninteresting film. You know, I just say I was not a fan of this film. I didn't rewatch it for the last 20, 30 minutes. More like 20 minutes. Uh, but other than that, you know, yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. I didn't hate, I, I didn't really like the film, but it's not like a full-on rant or, hey, piece of shit. But uh, I can say I, I dislike the film. I'm not a big fan of the movie. I thought it was just too slow paced, too dull, uninteresting plot, un uninteresting Bond girl. Uh, Sean Connery and Robert Shaw was good, but on that, 
not a favorite of mine. But either way, uh, thanks for watching. Take care. And I guess next one will be what definitely a lot of people have talked about this one. Goldfinger. See you then.